Overthinking is blocking your hockey performance. And I'm gonna teach you how to actually build more confidence by learning how to reset your mind effectively anytime that you lose the present moment, anytime you're out of flow state, how to get back into it, how to have confidence consistently. So let's rewind a little bit. So when I was in junior hockey, minor hockey, and pretty much my whole career, I always remember that my mind would wander way, way more than I wanted it to. And I know every hockey player in the world has experienced this at some point in their career, right? It's a few minutes before the game. The game is about to start. Your mind starts racing. Your mind's just not in a great place. You're starting to question your game. You're wondering, did I prepare well enough? Am I going to perform well? And honestly, you're kind of just hoping that you don't just kind of have a terrible game and just have like a totally crappy performance. It's this deep feeling that's weighing your body down. It makes you feel heavy. It makes you feel slow. It makes you make slow decisions. I remember before, before games, I used to ask myself these same core questions. Have I done enough training? Did I do enough for the pregame? Am I really dialed in? Am I focused on the right things today? Are scouts noticing me? Is my coach going to play me on the first power, power play, the second power play? Am I going to get a lot of ice time? I don't know if I've earned it. And then during the games, I found that my mind would wander too. And it used to piss me off because I couldn't figure out, like, why do I keep doing this? And then, of course, when you overthink, what you always find is that it's not just that you're overthinking. It's that you start getting anxious, you get nervous, you get overwhelmed, and you're just kind of scared to, to mess up. And then it leads to you not playing the way you want to play. And so as you stand there, as the anthem's playing, the last thing that you want to have happen is you to be doubting yourself and to be wondering, am I going to play well? The last thing you want is before the game, you're in your head. And then you get into the game and you stay in your head. And so the problem I had, and the problem you probably have as well, is that you were overthinking and you don't have the tools to actually fix this overthinking. I wish I had have understood what I know now back then because I would have been able to actually get out of this. I would have been able to teach myself the mental tools to be able to handle and reframe this overthinking and create techniques and be able to actually just play the way I wanted to play, or at least let my abilities come out, whatever those were. And so let's begin this lesson. I'll stop rambling. I'll get right into it. So what is overthinking, first of all? So overthinking is when you consciously think about something more than necessary to accomplish a goal. So basically, when you do overthink, it leads to you being indecisive, and you don't actually make efficient decisions. You don't make decisions quickly. You don't operate on instinct. Overthinking is really when you have that voice in your head and it's taking over and trying to instruct your body and tell your body what to do. And it prevents you from being able to get into flow state. So instead of trusting your instinct and getting into that flow mind, you get into overthinking mind and your ego takes over or that conscious voice in your head. You start talking, you start thinking, and that voice gets louder and it distracts your attention from what's going on in the moment. So you're not able to be present and when you're not present, you can't get into a flow because flow state is really just being so focused on the present with a clear goal in mind that your mind just centers in and gets into this present moment flow and you just do what your instincts tell you to do. So instead of overanalyzing the situation, when you get into a flow state, you just pay attention to what's going on and you trust whatever instincts you have programmed into your mind and body. And I'm sure you've heard the, the concept analysis paralysis. That's all it really is, is it's just when you overthink a situation. You're thinking more than necessary to accomplish the goal. And when you overthink, it leads you to actually think slower. And the reason I know this is because I want you to think about when you sprint, for example. You sprint as fast as you can. Do you have to instruct every part of your body and tell it exactly what to do? No, you rely on your instincts. When you're in practice, do you have to tell every joint, every ligament, every tendon, every muscle exactly what to do and when to do it? Do you have to instruct yourself? Or do you simply just trust that your body will do what you want it to do and allow it to accomplish the goal? You let your body accomplish the goal. You rely on your instincts. So the key here is you want to instruct instead, or you don't want to instruct. You want to rely on your instincts and stop instructing. So get it out of your head that you're trying to instruct yourself. You're trying to allow your instincts to take over. When you let your instincts take over, I call this letting the software run. And really what that means is that you're letting the things that you've programmed into your mind, those instinctual behaviors or patterns, you let those just come out. But there's one thing I want to be super clear about here. Not all thinking is bad. So it's important to remember that if a certain way of operating, whether it's like mind or body, whatever it is that you're doing, if it is sustainably and consistently producing a result, then it's not necessarily a bad thing. And what I mean is that if whatever you're doing, whether you're 
quote unquote overthinking or not, if it's leading you to sustainably get an outcome, then it's not really overthinking. I wouldn't categorize it into a thing to solve. It's actually something that's producing the result. It's doing it consistently and it's going to be sustainable. That's all that really matters. So whatever weird technique or tools that work for you or for other players, I'm not saying that you have to just adopt exactly what I say or whatever method or approach. It's understanding that you want to address the problem of overthinking, of thinking more than necessary to accomplish an outcome, and then pulling back and asking yourself, well, is what I'm doing overthinking or is what I'm doing actually just what I need to do? Is it effective thinking? Is it getting into flow mind or whatever other kind of things you need to do to get into a flow? Because all we really do, all we want to do is get into a flow. That's all that really matters. And so we get into a flow and we trust our instincts. And then we step back and ask ourselves, are we actually getting consistently into a flow so we can use our instincts? And then obviously you need to make sure you're training your instincts. And so now it pulls us back to an even more important question, which is, was I good enough? And so what I mean by this is you could very easily ask the question, well, maybe you just weren't good enough. That's why you were overthinking. And maybe you should have been overthinking. Maybe you should have been nervous because you just weren't as prepared as you needed to be. And I do agree with the first part of the statement. Maybe you just weren't as good as you could have been. I totally agree with that. I definitely could have been significantly better. And I think all hockey players feel pretty similarly that you can always be better. And I hope you feel that way. I hope you know that there's always a higher version of you that does exist that you can move towards. And I definitely could have been attacking the four horsemen of hockey or four buckets that I break hockey down into. And what I really call these is the four horsemen because you need all four of these to really make sure that you perform and are doing the things you want to do in games. So let me explain what I mean by that. So basically, I think of hockey ability as four core components. So the first one is mental ability. So do you have the mental skills to get yourself into the present moment and to act the way you want to act or play the way you want to play? You need to have those skills as a baseline. And most players lack that. That's why I focus so heavily on mental ability and helping you develop mental ability like NHL players. Then you want to develop hockey IQ ability. So this is you having your brain tell the body what to do when based on the information you're getting. So high hockey IQ is the ability to be aware of what's going on, notice the patterns, understand all the different things that are happening, and then make effective decisions, tell the body what to do based on what abilities you have. And that gets us, gets us into the second component of it. So that was the mind. So the mind is mental ability and hockey IQ. And then the other side of it is physical ability and then mechanical ability. So physical ability, all it comes down to is, do you actually have the strength, the speed, the power, the actual physical components that allow you to be able to execute the things that your hockey IQ is telling you to do? And then, do you actually have the mechanical ability? So are you mechanically moving in the most efficient way for you? And if you combine all four of these horsemen together, you're going to have high hockey ability, and it's going to increase your chances of high hockey performance. And that's all we really want, right, is to perform at our absolute best consistently. Now, if you're lacking one of these, for example, you're lacking mental ability, the problem is that when you lack mental ability, it's going to oftentimes prevent you from being present enough to be aware of what's going on so you can't use your hockey IQ effectively. And if you can't make the right decisions in the in the best, like then what's going to happen is you're not going to be able to use your physical abilities or be able to effectively use your mechanical abilities. And you need all four of them so that they work together. Because if you have the best mental abilities and you unlock the present moment, but you have terrible decision making, or you have no physical ability, or your mechanics absolutely suck, well, it doesn't matter. And it goes for all four of them. So you need all four. It's like a stool. If you have all four, then you're going to be stable and secure. But if not, if you're missing one of those legs, or one of those legs is like shorter than the other ones, you're going to tip over and fall. And for most players, you ask yourself, why am I not playing like I know I could? The reason is, is because you don't have all four of those at the same level. Something's lagging or bottlenecking your game. You need to identify which one it is and go work with somebody to figure it out. That's really the most effective way to do it, just being 100% honest. Go invest in yourself. Go do what you need to do to learn it. If you want to learn the mental ability stuff, come to me. If you want to learn Hockey IQ, go to somebody like Xander with Conscious Hockey, which we're now teaming up to create a, a program together and going to be working together. So you can learn both of those things from us simultaneously. If you want to learn physical ability, go to someone like Mason Hackle with Hockey Hacks. They, he does a great job with the physical ability and really understanding that. He also does a great job with mechanical ability. He learned all that stuff from Train 2.0. 
So maybe physical ability, you can go to somebody like a knees over toes, like ATG. You can go and work with those guys and learn the physical stuff. You can go with Train 2.0 to learn the mechanic stuff. I include all four of the horsemen in our programs for all of our programs because I think that all players need to have all four and be moving up together. But fundamentally, go work with a specialist if you notice that there's like one component that's missing. And if you're looking for like, again, the mental ability, that's specifically what I do. You can apply below if you want. That's my plug. So obviously, like I said, the key component is knowing, do I have like a block? And so one thing you can do is ask yourself, well, do I have like a mental block? And a mental block comes down again to mental ability or hockey IQ ability. So if you want to figure out if you have a hockey IQ ability block, here's what I would do. Ask yourself if you have an awareness issue, if you have a pattern recognition issue, if you have an anticipation issue, or if you have a decision-making issue. So do you often find yourself out of position during gameplay? Are you able to track the puck and opposing player simultaneously? Do you know where your teammates and opponents are on the ice without having to look directly at them? Can you identify when a scoring opportunity is developing before the puck gets there? Are you aware of what's going on? Do you know where everybody is on the ice? That's that's understanding awareness. Then pattern recognition. Okay, can you recognize the opposing team's strategies and you adapt during the game? Do you notice what the patterns are? Do you notice like reoccurring patterns with certain players or teams? Are you able to quickly identify, okay, there's a lane opening up here? Do you, are you able to often predict where the puck's going to be? Right? And then this connects really closely in a lot of those kind of our anticipation questions. But can you predict the next move of your opponent? And do you actually do that effectively? Are you able to be in the right place at the right time? Do you find yourself one step ahead of the play knowing what to do before it happens? Do you anticipate changes in the game flow and opponent's momentum? And then do you make effective decisions? When you're under pressure, do you know when to pass, when to shoot, when to hold the puck? Can you make a quick, effective decision in high-speed situations? Are you aware of multiple options when you have the puck? Can you select the best one? Do you find yourself second-guessing your chances during or after a play? Right. So those are the four components. And you want to be super clear on, do I have any of those? And if you do, then go and work with a hockey IQ specialist. Go work with somebody like that. Again, you can click and apply because if you want to work with me, you'll also be working with Xander so you can learn those things simultaneously. And work with somebody like that. It's super, super, super valuable that if the IQ block is there, you remove that IQ block. Okay, now let's get back to overthinking or learning how to stop overthinking. So then the next kind of core part of that question I was saying before, that statement that people make all the time, which is like, maybe you're not as prepared as you want to be or as good as you want to be. So that's why you should be nervous and you should be overthinking. Well, I don't agree with that. I fundamentally think that's a just a false belief. And the reason I think it's a false belief is because you don't need to think a certain way. You don't need to feel a certain way. Just because somebody is saying something like, if you're not prepared, you should be nervous, or if you're not good enough, or if you don't think you should win, you shouldn't have that like confidence or belief, or you should be nervous. That doesn't make any sense because those are just people's, again, it's a belief. It's an idea they have they, that they've convinced themselves and are trying to convince you is true. And a lot of hockey is like that. A lot of sports is like that. And that's the the core first thing I work with a lot of players to do is break like fundamental false beliefs that they have and stop taking the beliefs that they have seriously in the first place because that's all they are is just a, I think this is true when in reality they don't know, right? And so a really good way to think about this is underdog. Underdogs win all the time. And what I mean by underdog is somebody who's not expected to win. If somebody's not expected to win, sometimes they win and it happens way more often than we think. Go and look at betting. Betting is literally built on betting on underdogs. That's how people make money. And so the idea that you're supposed to not believe in yourself if you don't have evidence or if you're not expected to succeed is kind of ridiculous because why would underdogs win? Why would we even have betting in the first place, right? And so don't be nervous just because you're not expected to win or because you don't believe it because that's a belief. And even if it is accurate that the likelihood is low, it's not going to help you. You're not going to be able to get into a flow. You're not going to be better because you're overthinking, you're doubting, you're nervous, you're worried, and you just like look down on yourself. It's not going to help you. So what is the benefit, right? There's no justification for doing that. So why bother? And so I want to be very clear. Underdogs win all the time. So there's no reason to overthink. You don't need to be negative. It's logical to actually just be positive and be optimistic because Worst case is that you do lose. But if you believe before you go into the situation, oh, I'm going to lose anyways, 
then it's going to increase the likelihood you're probably going to not like that you're probably going to lose and then you're going to end up just like you reinforce it and then what benefit really comes from right there's not really much of a justification for leaning into that way of thinking or that belief system and so now at this point you're definitely wondering okay i understand it i get it i see how to look at the different blocks now the real question i have is like how do i stop overthinking how do i actually stop doing this and how you do this is through many different techniques there's a bunch of different approaches you can take but a super effective one that I found that I've helped pro guys, D1 guys, high level junior, and pretty much every level, I've helped all these guys learn this, and it's called the mental reset method. And basically, the mental reset method breaks down into six core components. So you have number one, noticing. You have label. You have interrupt. You have reframe, adjust, and then surrender or accept. And so basically, the key here is that you can understand this and you can fully get this principle and this technique or any technique that's going to help you stop overthinking, but you're not going to walk away from any of these videos or these lessons and just stop overthinking altogether. You're not going to shut the voice off in your head. It's going to come back. You're going to have negative thoughts. The goal is not to just suppress or avoid these thoughts. You're not trying to quiet them. You're not trying to remove them. What you're really trying to do is learn how to diffuse from them in the first place. And what I mean by that is not take them seriously. Being able to realize a thought is just a thought. Like you don't hear a bird chirping and then freak out and think, oh no, and start having these like like freak out about that thing because it's it's a sound that's that's you're, you're hearing and you don't take it seriously. It's just a sound. But when we have a belief that I'm going to fail this thing, we hear that sound in our head and we're like, oh, that's true. That's real. Now I have to be worried. Now I'm scared. But it's just sounds. It's just noises that your brain makes or the mind or the ego or the, the conscious voice in your head, right? And so it's really important to realize you don't need to take it seriously, but it's going to be there. And so learning to manage it and having skills to, to handle the, the voice in your head, it's the technique that you have to learn at some point or else the ego or the voice in your head is probably going to just keep kind of running your life and it's going to keep pulling you in different directions because you're going to have a negative thought or you'll have a negative emotion, or a positive one for that matter, and it's going to pull your attention away from the one thing you can control, which is the present moment that you're in. And in a game, you're in the present moment. That's all it ever is. It's just what's happening in this exact moment. When you're in the game, it's just this exact play that's happening at this exact moment. That's it. And so being able to rewind and kind of pull yourself back with a simple technique can help because, you're, yeah, you're going to think for a second, but if you learn this technique and become super, super, super efficient with it, it happens without consciously thinking. Your brain just kind of does it, and it allows you to be able to kind of pull yourself out of that overthinking and snap you back into the moment. And so let's break down these six steps. So step one is notice. So you want to become aware of the thought or emotion. Become aware it's there. Basically just notice, okay, it's there. Something's here. And if you don't notice something, then it doesn't matter, right? Like, you don't notice you have a, a leak in a pipe, but you can't fix something you don't know. Number two is label. So you've noticed it. Now you want to label it so that you create a distinction that this is a thought. This is a thought that's happening. So instead of it being something you take seriously, you say, that's a, that's a thought about this thing. You basically want to say, I'm having that thought that I'm not good. And I know that is a thought in and of itself, but by identifying it and being mindful or conscious of, oh, I have a thought there. At least you're now, your attention is on the thought and you are now creating a separation. You're creating distance from it. And this allows you to become what we call the observer and you're observing the thoughts as opposed to being really caught up in them. Then you want to interrupt. So I like to say play the change game. So you basically just say change. And what you've done at this point is by noticing it, by labeling it, and then by interrupting it is you're just cutting the pattern. Because typically what's going to happen is you're going to, have a thought or an emotion, and then it's going to trigger a thought or emotion, the opposite one. And they're going to be basically causing you to act in a certain habitual way. And so we all know this because, for example, if you get angry and you start thinking angry thoughts or you think angry thoughts and get angry in a game, then you typically will act more angry. Unless you notice it, you do actually consciously label I'm angry, you do intercept it or interrupt it. And then the key here is that you want to like not take it seriously, so we like we talked about diffusion, but then if you can also reframe it and very quickly just say, okay, cool, I look at it a different way, 
that can be the, you can even skip number four if you want, but really the reframe is just taking it from something you've cut the, the tie, you've stopped the pattern from playing out. And then you want to come in really quickly now and just flip it, have a positive, have a forward thought. And what I mean by forward thought, is like, here's what I'm going to do next. Set a clear intention, which is number five, right? Is adjust and set a clear action intention. And so what I mean by action intention is to actually simplify the next thing you're going to do into here's what's going to happen next, create that mold you want to play into, and then you act into it, right? It's setting a target or an objective ahead of you. It's like setting a goal in life in anything, and then you now have something you're moving in that direction towards. So you set that intention. And then the sixth key step, and this is the most important of all the steps. If you're going to pick any step to master, it's this one. It's accept and surrender. And what I mean by this is it's letting go. It's just completely disconnecting from the mind and taking it seriously and listening to it. And you just let it do whatever it's doing and you just let go. And when you do, this allows you to let go and then bring your attention into the moment. So as you do accept and you do surrender, then just bring your attention back to what's going on. What do I see? What do I, do I hear? What am I like feeling? Like, what like touch? Like pay attention to the actual like physical environment. If you bring your attention to those things, suddenly you can snap yourself back into the moment, which allows you to get into flow, which allows you to play more confidently, to trust your instincts. And then you're going to start to make the plays you want to make. And it's going to start coming out more and more and more. And you're going to remember, I'm so happy that Corson actually taught me this. So I fully understand how to break this. So I am able to reset my mind. Anytime my mind has pulled me into a certain direction, I can reset back to the moment, reset back to the moment. It's just pulling you out and then you come back into the exact moment that you're in. And so next steps, if you're a super serious player, you want to learn more about this stuff. Number one, I'd subscribe to whatever you're listening, watching this on. So subscribe to the podcast. Please leave me a rating. I really appreciate it. Helps me actually kind of grow and spread this message and, you know, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions specifically. And if you want to go deeper with this stuff, you want to apply and learn how to use mind body hockey training to develop the mental ability, the confidence in the preparation like NHL players, then you can apply down below and you'll see if we can help you. Hope you have a great week. Hope you absolutely crush it. I'll see you guys at the next level. Talk soon.